What are we doing? Well, this is the Kaiser Beg Letter XL. You can see it and Jared's on the counter because I liked it so much, I was going to get one and then wound up with one as a Christmas present. I honestly, I honestly think, someone asked me in a, in a live feed what my favorite Kaiser was. And I think by far, now that I have this and I carry it all the time, I think this is the best one they've made. So let's turn it around. Let's look at it from above and we're gonna take a look at this amazing offering from Kaiser. All right, guys, like I said in the intro, this is what I think is probably the best Kaiser knife yet. Now, Kaiser has been making a lot of knives over the years that I have liked. Um, some of them notably have been the mini roach and the, the bag letter, the mini bag letter. This knife comes in a lot of different versions and several different blade shapes. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and we'll get a spec sheet up here so you guys can take a look at it if you want. And we're going to do some size comparisons. So size comparison wise, your first knife's going to be the Beg Letter XL. As you can see, they're one for one. Okay, I'm just being silly. Hang on. The Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And as you can see, this is a good bit bigger than the Para 2. By the way, this is part of my 10,000 sub giveaway. We're about 60 subs from that. Um, you have to be a, a publicly visible subscriber to be entered. But yeah, there you go. Really popular knife. A lot of people should know that reference. It's not a little knife. So your next knife is going to be the Migron Knives Valona, which I picked because it is a nine inch knife. And that way you have some scale. It is just almost one for one. So very, very close in size. You saw the spec sheet. So Migron Valona. And as always, the final knife co for comparison is going to be the Chris Reeves Knives Sabenza Large 21. And as you can see, this is significantly larger than the Sabenza, which is not a small knife. It's a, it's a pretty good size knife. So there you go, some good size comparison. If you're new to the channel, I always use this one because it's a very, very popular knife and a lot of people are gonna know it. The majority of people in the knife community are gonna know it and have a good reference of size. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way and talk about this knife. So, like I said, this is by far my favorite Kaiser yet. And it's absolutely my favorite bag letter. Uh, the bag letter comes in three different sizes. You have the bag letter, the mini bag letter, and then the bag letter XL, which that's what this is. Um, and I, I think that they really knocked it out of the park with this one. So, uh, I know it comes, the, the original two came in some different blade shapes. This would be my preferred. So, this drop point blade on this, done in 154 cm and micarta this is beautiful now this was this was from white mountain knives so you are probably going to have to find this this version there this is done in a button lock which the button lock on this is incredibly good uh just the right amount of uh tension for flipping and everything like that beautifully well done weight reduction in the scales or i'm saying in the liners and it just is beautifully balanced. It has that that just about the pivot balance that I like, or maybe a little weight forward balance. Um, and in hand, incredibly, incredibly comfortable. Now, I have not sharpened this. This is brand new. This is a brand new knife. This is not the one you saw in the original video. This now is mine. This was a gift from my friend Tino. Thank you very much. And so we're going to talk about a couple of things that come with it new that I was unaware of. Uh, so size-wise, this is a large knife, but like the Migron Valona that we talked about earlier, this carries very small. And when I say that, I mean weight-wise, pocket-wise, and in hand, it does not feel like a nine-inch knife. Very, very comfortable in hand, ease of use. It's very nimble. It's very comfortable. It does not feel bulky or oversized in any way. I think if this knife was any larger it would and I think I don't think I would like it if it was like a half an inch smaller I think that the proportions would be out of whack for me my carta on it is done beautifully beautifully well it's that burnt orange or light tan or burnt umber whatever you want to call it uh flipping action on it is amazing it really really is but one of the things about it, like some other knives that I've talked about recently, for a large knife, it comes down and transitions really well to a very, very sharp edge. Like I said, this is 154 cm. It 
is screaming sharp out of box. I mean, like absolutely a knife that I would not immediately throw on the stones and sharpen. So the cool thing about this is if you hang on a second, I will show you something that they've done that I think is awesome. Let me get the packaging and show you. Now, it's not this packaging that I wanted to talk about. When you open this knife up, you are given... I'm not even worried about the, the documentation and stuff. You are given an entire set of hardware for this that is already Loctited and includes a whole new plunger assembly that's done in black. So if you wanted to customize this and throw in a black button lock on this, you absolutely could. Um, so as far as construction and build and everything, I don't see any issues with this. Thumb studs are just about perfect. You have good, good access to them. Even though they're tight, they're in a position where you can get underneath them here where that's scalloped out and it flips beautifully even with the thumb studs. Like I said, the blade is beautifully done and it cuts so well and comfortably because you have got a very large area to get up on and hold on to it. And the fact is, for a large knife, it's relatively narrow this way, but what it is, is it's fairly broad this way, which gives you the 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 comfort level. So if you're gonna have a skinny knife, it's gotta be a little thicker. If you're gonna have a thicker knife, you wanna maybe get, if you want a thinner knife here, you've gotta go this direction because you wanna fill that hand so you're not engaging those muscles continuously and, and giving yourself fatigue in the cut. So, yes, beautifully done. Like I said, the action on it is great. Some people will complain because, yes, it does drop open. But if you push that button and then release it and just slow it down a little bit, it absolutely does not pop back out of detent. And like I said, just beautifully done. Flipper tab is positioned just about perfectly. And it is not sharp or hot spotty at all. And the pocket clip is a nice deep carry pocket clip. I like to say I don't like the Kaiser pocket clips, but where it's positioned on this knife, it's absolutely fine. Um, and it allows this knife, large knife, to be carried well forward in the pocket because it drops in pretty far. You can carry it with other knives. So, so far, that's all the good things. Now that I own one, you're probably gonna see another video long-term carry on this. So. There are a couple of small bad things that I have to point out. I absolutely do. It's it's not a lot. I do love this knife. I'm not blinded to it because I like it. I absolutely can give it an honest review. So let's go ahead, flip this around, and take a look at the bad stuff. Flip side of the coin, flip side of the knife. All right, let's look at the bad stuff. And like I said, there's not much to say about this that's bad. So this is going to be a very quick segment. Um, there is nothing wrong with the button lock at all. It is great. I love it. And it's great. The only thing I can say is the button sticks up a little bit. Pro I, 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 this is kind of picky, Annie. I wish that this was more flush since that area behind around the button has been cut out so that you, you have more of a flush button. Because if it was more flush in the closed position, I think it would be a little more flush in the open position. And since it's not one that you have to worry about, like it, it's not flat across the scale, you've got that area cut out, I think they could have made that a little more flush in the closed position. Um, but that's just an aesthetics thing for me. Um, the jimping, the jimping on it, like I've said so many times, that jimping is way too soft. Uh, I like jimping that's aggressive. The point of jimping is to prevent you from doing this. Uh, and the fact is that that jimping is relatively soft. They have softened that all out. I don't know if maybe in the stonewash finishing that the points got knocked off, but it lost any bite that it had on that. So the jimping is not great. And if you're gonna have jimping that's that soft, I would prefer you just didn't do it at all. I don't like to look at jimping, I don't find jimping to be something aesthetic. Uh, so if you add that element, don't have it be vestigial, which that's just a name for something that's there, but no longer serves a purpose. The last thing is, while I don't dislike the pocket clip on it, I think that a better pocket clip could have been done. This could have had a little bit better uh, feel if this was like a milled clip or something like that, but there is a plus, this this screw pattern uh, fits a lot of other 
pocket clips and you could absolutely throw it in. And then the final thing is I'm not a fan of the lanyard holes and this one, especially either if you look at it that way, it's looking at you or that way, there's a face on my knife. And I find that amusing now, uh, now that I've found that out and I've seen it, that all my knives are looking at me. But yeah, I'm not a fan of lanyard holes. It could have easily been done in a different fashion. Several other companies have done it in different ways, either a pin here uh, and then not have that or a small backspacer that has one integrally built into it like we saw on the Mini Arian. So that being said, there is nothing else really that I found wrong with this knife. So it's really hitting, it's hitting well. It's, it's, it's at bat has, has fared well. So I'm sure we're gonna see more about this knife because like I said, now that I own one, it's mine. We're gonna definitely see that more often. So, all right, guys, let's turn this around, do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. So there you go, guys. The Beg Letter XL, this by far is the best Beg Letter or the best uh, Kaiser so far. Like I said, so I was going to buy one and then my buddy heard me talking about it, wound up getting me one for Christmas. It was an early Christmas present. So yeah, before that, I would have to say it would be probably the Mini Roach, I would say would be one of the best, which is still a great, great knife, super good cutter. But yeah, guys, I'm talking to you, Kaiser. Way to go. You just knocked it out of the park with this one. And I know that this has been out for a little while. So, you know, I, I know that I'm kind of late to the party, but Better late than never, holy crap. So guys, there you go. That's it on this one. Uh, if you like the videos, do me a favor and give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, you can give them a thumbs down. That doesn't hurt my feelings, but I want to know what it is you don't like about the video. I can't change it if you don't tell me what you don't like. Um, unless it's just, you just don't like me and I, I can't change that. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. Interactions with the channel are one of the best ways to do it. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, make sure you set that bell icon to all so you don't miss the two videos a day that I'm working my way back to. Um, and if you do hit that bell icon, make sure you've got notifications turned on your device. Uh, other ways you can do it if you want. I have a ton of affiliate links down below in the description. All of them support the channel directly. The Amazon ones, if you click on them, it doesn't matter whether you actually purchase the item that you were clicking on. Anything you purchase after you click on that, I get credit for it. It supports the channel. A couple of my a couple of my affiliates have discounts associate, associated with them right now. Through the holidays, Atlas VPN is like 85% off and for a two-year subscription and uh coffee brand coffee if you use my coupon code crazy sharp all one word you save five percent at checkout and it is amazingly good coffee uh it's it's keeping me fueled to make all these videos if you want to support the channel in other ways i have a membership it's all tier based down below it's on youtube i have a gilded server which is just like discord that everyone that's a member has access to baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into giveaways i do on the gilded server so if you are a member and you're not there you're not going to get picked and the uh, premium tier guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. where I've set up a coupon code that will save you 10% on my merchandise or other creators' merchandise. And that coupon code, again, once again, is Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S. Crazy Sharp saves you 10% at checkout over there. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. It makes it easier for me and Nico, the Hobbit, to moderate the channel. And uh, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. I will see you in the next video.